All right, before we do this, I just need to be very clear. I need to give a warning. This will not be easy. So, do not drink and derive. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. Um, but, it, uh, I mean, this is probably good advice, but the fact is, um, like I've said, uh, I encourage you to, at every point where you might not be entirely clear where we've gone, pause it and just work it out for yourself, because that's literally the best way you can understand it. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but we're going to, again, try to derive what the momentum operator is. And as a reminder, we're going to start off by doing so using this equation. We're going to calculate the expected momentum by multiplying the... Uh, I've already screwed up, dang it. Um, we're going to take the time derivative of the expected position which will treat this as the velocity now, times m. And I'm not, I'm not going to write what that, what that was here immediately, but just recall exactly what our assumptions were. So, this right-hand term here, I'm going to take m times ddt of our integral. Um, by the way, from here on out, I'm going to drop the limits. It's always going to be assumed that we're going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity of, uh, I'm going to write it like this, x times psi squared dx. And you know what? I'm not even going to write it like that. I'm going to write it strictly as psi conjugate psi dx. And this will be the easiest way to deal with it, so that's why I've written it as such. So, to go further, what we now can recognize is that this integral, so the, the dummy variable is the space, the space position x. So by taking the time integral of this, this spatial variable doesn't matter. So we can do this at any time, and we're still going to integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the x is time independent, but we know that the, uh, the, the wave function psi very well may have a time dependence. So, and, and not only may, it will. Um, so what we're going to do is pull that time derivative into the integral, and it will look like this, m times the integral of... Now what we're going to do here is, remember, we'd, we're not going to take the derivative of the dummy variable. I am going to take d dt of psi star psi dx. And notice I've changed the full derivative to a partial because it's clear that this can depend both on time and the dummy, the dummy variable x that we're integrating across. Um, I, I could have just written that full variable and you probably wouldn't have noticed, but or full derivative, but whatever. At this point, we can now use the chain rule so this is m times integral of x, and I'll write it like this. Um, the order here won't matter, but it will be a little bit easier to do it like this. Psi star d psi dt x plus d psi star dt psi dx. Parentheses there work, whatever. Um, but so again, make sure you understood how we got from there to there. It's simply just the chain rule of differentiation. Now, this is really two integrals. So I'm going to treat this part here, the, the first term, as an integral of its own. And so specifically, I'm going to call this the L term, and I'm going to call this the R term. And I'm strictly going to focus on the L term first. So, for the L term, what we're going to do here is, and I'm going to write it exactly as is, it equals m times the integral of x psi star d psi dt dx. So, again, strictly just that first term there. And just to recall that if we want, if it's helpful, I can put parentheses around each of those things. Just make that look a little neater. So it's the complex conjugate of our function psi 
times the time derivative of our normal function, psi. And at this point, remember those couple like key uh, equations that we laid out? I'm going to employ equation A. So we're going to use equation A right here. And just as a reminder, what that is, is d psi dt equals, and we had a positive h bar over, uh, positive i h bar over 2m, d squared psi over dx squared minus h bar over i, or no, sorry, minus i over h bar, v psi. You'll see why I'm not going to have to worry about that here shortly. So this equation will now, once we replace that this part with this, it will look like this. So L, is my blue. So L will continue on down here, equals, and I'm going to pull this uh, uh, do I want to pull that out? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to pull out the IH bar over 2M. We'll, we'll have to absorb that into here, so, so you'll see what we're doing in a moment. But I'm going to pull out the IH bar over 2M, and so M I H bar over 2M, and you see why it's a kind of a silly way of saying that, but I don't care. Integral of X size star... And then this thing here, d squared psi dx squared, minus, and now uh, re-putting that term back in there, it's going to look like uh, minus some constant, and I'm just going to generically write the constant as c. So in, in the end, I guarantee this term's going to disappear, but minus c times... Um, x, I'm going to need a new line, uh, minus whatever that constant is times x psi star v psi. And all of that is dx. Okay, so I'm not 100% confident that I've done that right, so I'm going to pause for a second just to make sure I did. You should do the same. Again, keep in mind that's going to be some dumb term there. that it's, We're going to get rid of all that in the end. That's why I'm not worrying. Okay, so I'm confident I've done that right. And so I'm going to leave this as is. And again, the important part is going to be this first term there. So next, I'm going to focus on the right-hand side one. And we're going to use basically the same idea, so it will be a little bit shorter here. But the right-hand side will equal m times the integral of x. Now we're going to have the d psi star dt times psi dx. And so at this point, now you can see that instead of using a, we're now going to use our a star equation. So we're going to use that equation a star. And so we're going to input, and I will write this out in its entirety here, m times the integral x, and then we'll need a whole lot of stuff here. We have um, minus i h bar over 2m d squared psi star dx squared plus i over h bar v psi star. All of that's multiplied by psi dx. And again, just checking to make sure that's right as well which it is. And so at this point here, we can rewrite that right term as follows. I'm going to pull again that 
minus IH, well, I'm going to, yeah, I'll, I'll pull out the minus IH power over 2M. So that equals minus, uh, forget the M already, M IH bar over 2M. And then now I have the integral of this. X D squared psi star DX squared. And then I'm going to distribute that psi DX plus whatever that constant C was before. So plus that same constant C times, and by the way, this is, an inter, this is still in the integral, but I'll just make it its own one, plus C X psi star V psi DX. Again, confirm that's right, but we have that numeric constant times the X that was there, psi star V psi. We have psi, uh, psi star V psi. So this is why I say it gets a little messy, and, and I wish I had a much larger board because this is where it really, you really need to be able to write all this in one line, but I simply can't here, obviously. Um, so at this point, though, what we're going to do is we're going to recombine L plus R. And... Uh, before I even do that, let's point out why I've been just scoffing at that, that second term here. So notice from L, we have a minus CX psi star V psi. From the right-hand side, we have, a, we have a plus CX psi star V psi. So do you see exactly what happens? Strictly by taking the complex conjugate of the Schrodinger equation, which is exactly what A and A star are, simply just by flipping that I there, we just introduce the exact opposite sign for the psi star V psi term. This cancels that. And all we need to worry about here is this thing plus uh, plus that thing. Or really, there's a minus. And one more thing to note, it should be entirely clear to you, but the masses will cancel there, and they cancel there. So let's try to do this properly here. The left side, and by the way, we're going to have a factor of i h bar over 2 outside of everything now. i h bar over 2, i h bar over 2 integral bracket x psi star second derivative of psi minus uh, and actually let's put the brackets after the x so x is going to be in both terms so x times psi star second derivative of psi minus second root of psi star times psi dx. So again, what everything we're calculating here is still that expected value of p, just to be entirely clear. Now, we have a psi star times second derivative of psi plus second derivative of psi star times derivative of psi. Turns out this thing is another example of an integral that we, we can kind of scoff our way out of a little bit, or at least make it simpler. So I'm going to need a little more space here, but there's, there's a nice easy way to simplify this that you'll see momentarily. 